Have you had problems with jamming, with thread skipping, with bunching, with threads cutting, and you're just like, why is this happening right now in the middle of the project? Well, I have 11 tips to help you solve those problems. Some of them you may know, and some of them you may not have thought about. So on that note, hi, wonderfully created, and welcome back to Created I Am. If your thread stitches looks like this, then you have to go into your seam ripper and just, it's a lot. Hopefully you are going to find this video very useful. I'm going to try and order the tips, starting with the ones which are more likely to be a common problem. And the last one is one that you may not have considered, especially if you've bought a nice sewing machine and have just been enjoying the sewing journey with it from day one. I am by no means an expert at sewing. I'm just sharing what I've learnt as I've gone along my sewing journey. You may have some really useful tips, so please drop them in the comments so that we can gain from it as a community. The number one thing to check is your tension dial. When your thread comes through the needle, you don't want it to be too taut, too tight, or too loose. <laughs> or too loose. Your dial might be like mine, it's slightly hidden, or it might be a round circle. Most dials will start at zero and then go to a high number, mine is nine. The closer you go to zero, the tighter the tension will be, hence the more difficult it will be for the thread to flow loosely. The higher the number, the more looser your thread will be. Normally, you want to stay within the average marked out on your tension dial, but if you find that your thread is a bit loose when it's coming out of your needle, you want to go towards the zero. If it's too tight, then you want to go towards your larger number. Most of the time, staying within the average range should be okay. Secondly, as you adjust the tension, you might also want to adjust the stitch length dial. This shouldn't affect things too much, but I found fiddling with this could sometimes help. The third thing you want to check is that you've taken your thread and passed it through the whole process for threading. Sometimes I look up at my sewing machine and I realise that the thread has not gone through the take-up lever or something like that, something really simple. So when you're noticing there's a problem, stop and check you've not skipped one of the parts of the threading process. Number four, you may find that actually you've not skipped any part of the threading process, but nevertheless, it will be good for you to re-thread. Take out your thread from the needle and out of the bobbin and re-thread everything. Do utilize the sewing machine manual to make sure you are threading it properly. If you're not sure, you can also search up your sewing machine and the model, and you may find a video explanation online. Number five, this might seem like an obvious one, but I've actually seen this mistake being done. When you put in your bobbin, you need to make sure that your bobbin is in your bobbin case before you insert it. Some machines have a drop in bobbin insert thing <laughs> going on, so you don't actually have a bobbin case. But if like mine, you have a bobbin case, you must put the bobbin in the case before it enters the sewing machine. So number six is still on the bobbin. Now you know that you need your bobbin case. Make sure you've inserted the bobbin correctly. Again, this is where reading the instructions is going to help you, you non-instruction readers. Most machines recommend that you put in your bobbin into the case with it going anti-clockwise. This means that if you pull on the thread, you should be able to see a P shape. If you create a B or Q shape, as your thread is being pulled, it may start catching and causing other problems. Again, check your manual to make sure that you're putting in your bobbin the correct way. Once you've done that, maintain the P shape and slot it into the case. Once it's in, take the loose thread and pull it gently to the top. It will then slot through the section created on your bobbin and make sure you pull it all the way until it's in that open space. You can then pull the thread and you should find that it comes out decently. There should be a bit of tension on it, but not to the point where it's getting stuck or jammed. There is a such thing as bobbin tension, but most of the time, if you don't do anything to your bobbin case and keep it like you bought it, the tension should be okay. Then you can grab the handle, you don't have to hold the whole bobbin, and put it into the sewing machine. Now when you put it in, do make sure it clicks in place. The little latch on top will normally slot into a space and click into place. The seventh landmark of our tip session today is actually to do with your actual thread. 
if you're having a lot of snapping or inconsistencies and you've tried everything before it might be that the thread you have isn't strong enough sometimes certain colors of a brand are weaker than other colors if all else fails go back to a thread that you know normally works and see if that works with your garment if it doesn't then maybe the problem is beyond that and hence you will need tip number eight if you're working with thick material purchase a walking foot you may be having snapping and missed stitches issues because your sewing machine just can't handle all that material with its humble foot. So if you want to see a review on different foots, let me know in the comments. It might be something I put up soon. Now, if like me, you like to save the coins, tip number nine might direct you the way you do that. You want to make sure you're getting needles fit for your sewing machine. This could be the exact brand needle or could be one that is sufficiently a duplicate. I've had my sewing machine for years. It's probably been 10 years now. And around the time that the needles I had were snapping, I decided to purchase some others. Now, I got some originals originally, I believe. But then I got these really cheap ones, which were like 100 for who knows what cheapness they were. So when I was having a lot of problems with my sewing, I realised that that was the problem once I switched it back to an original make. I still use these needles only if I'm working with materials which have a lot of studs, things that are definitely needle breaking like masterminds. I'll just put these cheap ones on because I don't mind them breaking. So yeah, there's a place for them. But most of the time you want to get needles that are fit for your sewing machine. So how do you know if a needle is fit for your machine? Well, the certain parts a needle should have, believe it or not. I'm going to go through that in number 10. The tenth tip is make sure that you insert your needle into the machine correctly. Believe it or not, it's not a pop-out, pop-in process. There is a certain way for you to turn your needle. Now, needle parts. Your needle is made of a shaft, which is the thickest part on top, then the main part below. Your shaft will have a curved side and a flat side, and hopefully you can see that through the reflection on the needle here. You want to make sure that this flat side is facing the back. The placement of these things do actually matter to the mechanism and the working of the machine. The cheaper needles I mentioned before did not have this. They were just round throughout and did not have a scarf, have a flat part of the shaft. They didn't have a groove or an eye. <laughs> they had an eye or else it wouldn't be a needle. So once you've located the flat part of your needle, you want that to be facing the back of your sewing machine. You can take out your old one by turning the screw. Some sewing machines may actually give you a small screw that you can pop into that little indent and help you unscrew. But you can just use your hand or any other tool as long as you do it safely. Make sure you insert the needle all the way into the top. There shouldn't be any space and then tighten it. You don't want to over tighten it, but you shouldn't be able to move that screw with your hand. And there you go. That's the correct way to insert your needle. At the front, you should see that long groove, which is where your thread should follow before you insert it into the eye. Then at the back, you'll see the scarf, the small indent. Now... If all of that still has not solved the bunching, the cutting, the skipping problems, <laughs> I have one final tip that you may not have considered in your sewing journey. By the way, if you want to watch a short video of me trying to make wedding guest outfits in like 10, one hour, one week time limits, do check out that video. Now, the reason I'm mentioning that is because I actually had a bit of a problem with this colourful piece where it was bunching a lot. And this is where I utilised my 11th wonder. That was a light synthetic material, but this material here is a polyester and elastic blend or elastine blend. Instead of bunching this time, the thread was skipping so what do you need to do you may need to change your needle certain lightweight fabrics like satin might not hold up if you use the standard needle that you have in your sewing machine when you first bought it I'm going to talk to you about the two main needle types you want to consider how to tell the differences and what the effect of not using the right needle may be so there are a range of of needle types probably more than you might think exist but I'm going to talk about two mainly in your sewing machine most of the time you'll receive a universal standard needle that is 90 14 they're just different types of measurements for the same needle 
but I would also advise you to purchase a 7010. Now you can tell the difference here because one is blue, the 9014, and the green one is the 7010. The green one is thinner. The actual needle is thinner and so is the eye of the needle and that's because it's made for lighter weight fabrics whilst the 9014 is made for medium weight fabrics. There is a range of needles between and beyond them for even thicker materials and even lighter materials but standardly I think you should be okay with these two needles if you just want to start off with your needle adventure. The reason I also recommend these two is because of the change in the needle eye size, you should find that a basic standard thread should still work for both. That being said, for more professional and finer finish, you might want to get a thinner thread. So if all else fails, take out the 90 needle and put in your 70 needle, making sure the flat part of the shank is facing the back and then sew away. So how much of a problem does it actually cause if you don't have the right needle in? Well, here's a very good example. I have a standard universal 9014 needle in my sewing machine. I'm trying to sew this stretchy polyester elastic combination of a fabric and it's just not working. I had tried different adjustments at this point and I've actually taken my machine out of the house when I was originally sewing it. Hence I did not have the 70 needle to use so it was only when I got home I was able to change it and then the problems were solved. The problem with using a larger needle than needed is that you create holes in your fabric because you're piercing the fibres that are knitted together to create the material. If you use a needle that is too light, that's when you're going to have breakage problems where your needle is breaking too easily. If you have the wrong needle on, it doesn't matter if you have one layer or multiple layers, it's not going to sew properly. So just switch it out. I switched my Universal 90 into a Universal 70 needle, making sure the flat part was at the back. And then as you can see, the sewing process was so simple. <laughs> so simple as a general tip i would advise you that if you're not sure and the material seems very different from what you're normally used to do do a test patch cut out some scrap material and test it so that you're not damaging your material by creating unnecessary holes and then wasting your time by trying to fix problems that you've sewn into your material have a test patch and then adjust tension and everything else as needed most of the time if you hit the first couple of points or this key 11th point you will be okay. Do note there is a range of needle types. There's even something called a ballpoint needle, which helps you sew jersey stretch materials by not cutting the fibers or the elastin in the fabric. So the more you explore, the more you'll learn. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, do post them. If you have useful comments, please do share and discuss. Check out creatediam.com and at creatediam on Instagram. And please remember that despite the mistakes, the bumps and the missed opportunities we can have in our lives, you are wonderfully created.